Now, buddy, this is the pencil airplane, the Boeing 757-300. It is oddly long while being oddly thin. It's one of the, you know, longest single aisle airliners. It is a plane that can seat 300 people. It is 54 meters long. You know, walking down the cabin while boarding is kind of like a hiking trip because it's just so long. And you have to wait for all the passengers to come. And I think the 757-300 is probably the longest we should ever build a single aisle airliner because it's starting to become borderline inefficient to board it. You know what I mean? In fact, the whole 757 series is a plane of many things. I mean, I like to call it the Ferrari of the skies. It's slightly overpowered in both variants. But here, especially the 757-200, which is slightly shorter, can take off pretty much anywhere because those engines have just way too much power for no reason. Look at that very short runway no trouble at all though 757 is able to take off without any problems this plane although it is ancient and starting to slowly die we made a video about flying the 757 last year which should be retired this year it still holds up very very well but everybody was time Whoa. Time to mess around with the 757. Make a Swiss Cesar one modification. How long can we make it? Once again, the Pratt & Whitney 2000 engines on this plane have the power for the fuselage to be just a bit longer. Everybody, let me introduce to you the Boeing 757-2000. I'm losing hope in this channel. I think I've made the fuselage that's in front of the wing a bit too long. Everybody, I've added an overall seat of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And now that times 6, 108. We've added 108 more seats to the Boeing 757, meaning we have 345 seats on board this airplane. Uh, which is nearly as much... Nearly as much as the 777, really. While the 757 is a single aisle airplane, I've practically just made it worse. But it somehow probably flies, I think. Here is the cockpit, which works well. It's just slightly in front. One trouble is, though, that I haven't really done the modeling properly. Look, I haven't really extended the cabin here in terms of the airplane model. Look at this. We can walk here and through the cabin, and then we find more empty space. The cabin is slightly broken. You can even see through the windows here that I haven't really done a proper job, but we can kind of see right here the window, or original window uh, location here of, of the cockpit here. Can you see that? This is how far the cockpit is moved in front, and of course, the tail is also moved very much into the back. Now, um, yeah, this might be a bit of a problem. This airplane's obviously now a lot more heavy here. So I don't know if those overpowered engines now are overpowered at all anymore. And also, I don't know how, I mean, the, the wing to fuselage can fit, and that's stupid. Anyway, we are definitely very heavy on a very normal configuration. We've ruined the range because we don't have lots of fuel. And we've probably removed the sporty pedigree of the 757. But no matter, we should be able to take off anyway. Come on, let's go full power. You can do it, airplane. Everything is looking semi-well. Come on now, full power. You can do it. You can do it you can't you can probably not yes look at the mighty 757 i trust in you let's put the flaps down slightly now you can do it come on come on come on here we go 100 knots now you should be able to do it now i'm not even sure i mean i, don't, I think we need to upgrade the landing gear as well like there's no way we'll be able to hold up with our new weight and we've we've been unable to take off so um I've, oh, wow, look at that wing flex. Yeah, so I've kind of ruined this plane. I like that idea. This is perfect. Let's go uh, choose a longer runway. Come on. Uh, yeah, sorry. All right, here we go. Welcome to Nice Airport. Yeah, I think the nose... I think we are quite nose heavy. I mean, look at the nose landing. You're clearly struggling. We're definitely exceeding maximum takeoff weight, and I don't even want to just get started on, like, the maximum landing weight. Come on, come on. You can do it. Or not. Come on, flaps out now. You are already at 100 knots, but I presume those wings need a lot of knots to be able to create lift now. Come on, flying pencil. Come on. Here we go. 170 knots. Can we rotate? Can we rotate? Nose landing gear is up. I think we're not able to actually fit 100 more people in the seven. Okay, we've crashed into this bank right there, but we are, we are airborne. We haven't crashed into the water yet. We're slightly able to take off now. Look at that. Congratulations to ourselves. We can put that landing gear up now, which is once again very ridiculously far apart. I think just taxing this plane would make no sense as well. I think you should have to reposition the nose landing gear. It's way too far in front now, but we're able to somewhat fly, interestingly. 
Now, we do need quite a lot of speed, but come on, the Pratt & Whitney engines are able to take off. If you use full power, which is something you don't really do in real airliners, you don't actually go full power always. But this is what you need to do, and we've over. This is definitely a ruined airplane map, but it somehow flies at least. I wonder how it's going to land. But for that, let's go ahead and choose a different livery, because it's gonna look probably very funny. Air France. Ah, Air Franc, Air France. Good. Or Air France, France. You know, I've always done a good job at modeling these airplanes. I do wonder always how well these planes steer when we make them longer. Actually, not that bad. Obviously, the wing to fuselage ratio is absolutely ridiculous. But look, we've got quite good control. It's always just that it takes a bit of a while to actually bank these airplanes properly to change heading. But look, we're doing this quite well. Now we will land in this configuration once again, which will probably in real life just make the landing gear fall apart because we're just way too heavy for landing. <laughs> look at how this plane looks. All right, come on. We uh, we should be able to do this. I mean, yes, I could have resized the wings indeed to make this plane fly properly, but that, you know, it wouldn't look like a pencil plane anymore, would it? Let's see if we can come up for a landing. Now this plane only fly so well because we're at 360 knots <laughs> but come on come on air france france we are in france after all look at the beautiful spoilers coming out which are able to stop the airplane just fine i wonder what's like a minimum speed we can fly this airplane at come on flaps full now we are at 270 knots which is totally illegal by the way let's see how our new excess weight will influence our stopping performance probably quite a lot <laughs> Terrain, 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 terrain. You're okay. Alright. At 190 knots, plane still flies quite well. It doesn't even want to touch down. And, you know, the good thing about landing this fast is that we don't do a tail strike either. So, come on. Let's go ahead and stop now. All the way into the brakes. I want to see those brakes on fire. Yeah. The problem is, with our new weight, we are we have to use this airplane's app always maximum. Maximum brakes, maximum engines. Not very good for maintenance. I think you'd rather just opt for a set triple seven or something like that. Look, our brakes are semi on fire. Womp womp. Now, don't even get me started on crosswind. You know, with our long fuselage, we now have more attack surface, I reckon. Yes, we're landing now on L LAX. We are on board, uh, what's that? A uh, Merry American or American Erican. Good. Uh, let's see how slow we can fly this plane now. Actually, it flies quite well at 170 knots. I wouldn't have expected that. Once again, this wing does need quite a lot more speed to actually properly fly. But look, we are properly flying. We aren't crashing. This isn't the worst in the world. In real life, this would fly. We just need a lot more runway. Anyway, 17 knots of crosswind, and you can kind of feel that. Which is a general problem in planes that are quite long and fuselage, you know? Let's see now. Uh, can, we, can we land this? Yes! There, it's not that bad after all, isn't it? Let's go ahead and stop now. This is absolutely fine. I'm very happy with my creation, in fact. Perfect. We can hear some clapping in the background of the very excited passengers. 350 of them. Now, I think this, the funniest part is how this landing gear is definitely not made for this kind of weight configuration. Because, like, it's just bouncing around all the time. That nose landing gear is absolutely stressed. This is perfect. Something I haven't even thought about at all, by the way. It's, by the way, this is very American of a livery. <laughs> it's how the structural integrity definitely will be affected. I mean, a hard landing would probably just make the fuselage fall apart, which is perfect. Now, I do wonder, like, what is, like, the shortest runway we could operate this airplane on now? I mean, the 757 has operated here at Innsbruck in real life. This is a long enough runway, 2,000 meters, but we are at quite a high elevation. If this was to ever become a somewhat realistic concept, the 757-2000, it would have to operate at these kind of airports as well. Let's see if we can do it. Now, uh, yes, we're gonna give full power once again, just to you know, give it a try. Uh, full power indeed. Yeah, and uh, there we go. <sighs> Brakes release. Come on, you can do it, airplane. I know you don't like how heavy you've gotten. And I don't know you don't like either how slowly you are gaining speed. That's crazy. But you can do it, 757. For some reason, this airplane is veering off to the right now. But maybe someone really fat is sitting on the right side of the airplane. That could be a thing. Come on, let's take off. We're now at 150 knots. You should be able to take off. You should be. You should be. You should be. This is absolutely hopeless. This is absolutely... We need a 5 million thousand meter long runway. This thing's got a worse runway performance than the Adam of Andrew 5. Uh, so, in no chance at all. Literally, there is no plane in the world that wouldn't be able to operate out of this airport other than the 757. Absolutely hopeless case there. So, everybody, the long pencil plane 757. If you have the chance, you should take a ride in one. But not the 2000, maybe the 300 or the 200. 
So everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.